there is one more uh, very important quantity which uh, is required to be understood before we start writing the rate equations. That is our next plan. In LED we talked about emission, emission bandwidth and uh, the idea is to get to modulation bandwidth. We already saw, saw that see there are two features of laser diodes we were looking at. One was the spectral width. We already said how to improve the spectral width. We understood by just by putting cavity and putting cavity of high finesse, you can improve the spectral width. So, that problem is solved. Second problem is modulation bandwidth. And how did we derive the modulation bandwidth of LED? We did what is called as small signal analysis. In the sense, small signal harmonic analysis. We had a rate equation. There we said that I is modulated as I naught or I B plus I M sin omega t or E power j omega t. We did harmonic analysis and we said that the I B is very small so that nothing drastically changes in the system. And then we looked at the response of the system. We have to repeat the same process here. But for that I need a, what, what equation did you use that on? You use that equation on the rate equation, carrier density rate equation, right? A dn by dt equation. I am yet to derive the dn by dt equation for this. Uh, why is this dn by, why cannot I write the same rate equation here? What was the rate equation there? The rate of um, change of the carrier density dn by dt. Why does the carrier density change? You are injecting uh, current into the system. It decreases because of spontaneous emission, all the recombinations, right? Uh, that recombinations could be spontaneous, uh, well radiative or non-radiative. We said n by tau c will take care of all that. But in addition, what do you have here? Decrease because of stimulated emission. So, we need to add that term, okay. But stimulated emission is proportional to the, of course, it is proportional to population inversion, but it is also, it should be proportional to the number of photons, right? number of photons entering the system that is what is stimulating which means I need a photon rate equation. The number of photons is not constant in my system right. So, in addition to carrier density rate equation I need to have a photon density rate equation here. Now, to write down the photon density e rate equation I am trying to find out uh, what is the rate of generation of photons or what is the rate of decay of photons. So, there are two processes happening in the system. Inside the mirror, you have photons getting generated because there is a gain medium, but as it is propagating and hitting the mirrors and coming back, it is lost also, okay. So, there is a process by which the photons are lost in the system also. Because at each mirror, there is only a fraction that is getting reflected inside. What is happening to the remaining fraction? which is lost, but that is what we are interested in. That is the output that we are getting out of the system. So, there is an amount that is lost. So, we need to write the photon rate equation and right now we know this only in terms of the loss in terms of reflectance or reflection coefficient and also in terms of uh, cavity loss, okay. But now we need to write it in terms of a photon rate equation. Now, what does this photon rate equation tell you? Um, it tells you the rate of generation of photons, rate of decay of photons. So, I am trying to find out the rate of decay of photons first and rate of decay of photons is uh, defined through photon lifetime. And how can I imagine what a photon lifetime is? If I have a cavity and I deposit some photons inside the cavity at t equal to 0, let us say I have some p photons or p naught photons in my cavity and I am asking myself the question, what is the time after which? 1 by E of the photons remain in the system. Why do they get lost? They get lost because of reflections and so on, absorption and so on. So, it is a time after which the number of photons reduce to 1 by E of its original value that is photon lifetime. Now, we want to find the photon lifetime of the cavity that we are talking about, okay. So, how do you start doing this? We say that let P represent the photon number density at any given instant of time. Okay. Now, this is photon number density, meaning number of photons per unit volume. Just like carrier density, you are talking about photon density. And this rate of decay is proportional to initial available number of photons at any given in, uh, instant of time 
it is minus because the photon is decaying and this constant is 1 by tau p. So, the way we have defined the solution is p naught e power minus t by tau p. So, tau p is the time after which 1 by e of the original photons remain in the system. The question is how do I now relate it to the cavity parameters? What are the cavity parameters? The lossy cavity parameters that we know of R1, R2, alpha cavity. That R1, R2, alpha, uh, that D, all that. So, essentially, I can write it as alpha cavity plus alpha mirror. That is why I said, you know, that alpha mirror def definition is going to be useful. So, to find this, so that now the objective is to find the relation between. alpha uh, alpha mirror alpha cavity and tau p because alpha mirror alpha cavity is something that is measurable for us tau p is like I cannot measure the time of the photon right. So, tau p is a derived quantity for me, but it is a useful quantity because this equation exactly tells me how the photons are decaying in the system. So, I need this equation later. So, to do that relation what I am going to say that you let us say we consider linear propagation, there is no cavity it is just propagating in a along one direction. Then I know that p equal to p naught e power minus 2 alpha z, where alpha is a total loss. Why 2 alpha? Power, because now I am taking about p is photon density, photon density is proportional to intensity, intensity is proportional to power. So, what is the distance after which? the photon reduces to 1 by e of its original value because this is the relation that I know of ok. From this relation I want to move to tau p. So, I am asking myself the question ok if this is the relation if I am assuming that the photons are propagating linearly I know that after a distance of z is equal to 1 by 2 alpha the photons are going to reduce by 1 by e. So, which means if I have a distance d uh, or distance such that it is 1 by 2 alpha, my photons got reduced to initially you had p naught, this became p naught e power minus 1. Now, you see the definition of uh, 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 photon lifetime, you just need to convert this distance to time now, ok. And if the speed of propagation of photon is known, then I know that the photons is going to take a certain time to cover this distance and that is going to be my photon lifetime. Understood? Now, what is the speed with which the photon is propagating? C. You have to be little careful here. We now will talk in terms of group velocity and not really C which is phase velocity because information we are talking about propagation of information packet and information packet we know that is propagating with group velocity. Essentially, if you take a bunch of waves which are slightly uh, frequency separated, you have an envelope that is propagating and we are worried with the propagation of the envelope and not really that of the individual wave. And why are we talking about slightly different frequencies? Is this system generating one single frequency? No, we just said that there is a spectral width and because there is a spectral width, it is not that center frequency that is propagating, it is just a group of frequencies that are propagating. And depending on the medium, the group velocity and the phase velocity, phase velocity is the speed with which a given wave is propagating, the phase of the wave is propagating, whereas group velocity is the speed with which the envelope the bunch of all the frequencies are propagating, there is a subtle difference right. So, to be on the uh, correct side we will say that now we will talk about not C, but V g the group velocity. In fact, when we, whenever we try to talk about propagation of information in a fiber, we will talk about group velocity and not the phase because whenever you are trying to modulate carrier you have multiple frequencies. So, you are worried about how what is the speed with which all these multiple frequencies are propagating. 
Now, the difference between how to relate this group velocity and phase velocity we will learn again when we are talking about dispersion in the fiber. Okay. So, right now let us use group velocity. So, the distance after which the photon reduces to 1 by its original value is of course, 1 by 2 alpha we wrote down that. So, the time taken will be the time taken to propagate that distance and time taken to propagate that distance is distance divided by speed and speed is v g where v g is now my sorry this should be the same v group velocity. And this alpha like what we wrote earlier it is now constituted by both the mirror loss and the cavity loss. So, I say this is alpha cavity plus alpha mirror is this dimensionally correct v g is in meter per second alpha is nipper per meter. So, your answer is tau p in seconds at every time every stage please keep checking your dimensions because uh, in, in, in terms of terminologies also different books may represent uh, alpha or uh, you know n or n naught in different uh, units. So, when you are using data from different resources you make sure that you uh, intend to take that same dimensions the same quantity. Okay, so, now we are all set to write the photon uh, rate equation because I know that the photons are getting decayed because of uh, the loss in the system. So, I have my dp by dt one term of my photon rate, rate equation I have it ready minus p divided by tau p and uh, photon will get generated because of stimulated recombination and spontaneous recombination. Spontaneous recombination also will give rise to photons. Okay. So, the three terms in the photon rate equation will be decay because of the loss, uh, generation because of spontaneous emission, um, generation because of stimulated emission. What would the carrier density rate equation comprise of? dn by dt will comprise of injection that is generation of carrier density, loss of carrier density because of radiative and non-radiative recombination and loss of uh, carrier density because of stimulated emission. When I say radiative non-radiative recombination this was spontaneous process you have stimulated process. So, that also has three terms. Okay. So, we are ready to write those equations.